Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. What's going on, everyone? This is Brian, and she's Carrie. Hello. And this is the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Okay, we need to we need to talk about Motivation Monday. This is our new segment. We 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 um. Go Monday. Go Monday. Yes, go Monday. Go away Monday. No, that's not the right attitude to have. Go that's, Monday. Woo-hoo! All right. So Yay! what? <laughs> That's a little much, especially if someone's listening to this first thing Monday morning. That's a little much. I'm just saying. Um, so, uh, what we want to talk we about? Yin to each other's yang, Brian. <laughs> you're, right. you're all go Monday, and yeah. I'm like go Monday. Woo! Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Um, we we aim to please everybody. I know it's impossible, but we're trying. Yeah, I'm I'm the I'm more for the Eeyores in the crowd, and you're more for the piglets in the crowd. Did you just call me a piglet? I didn't call you a piglet. Okay, just so we're clear. All right. Um, Moving on. Yes, moving on. Away from this as far as possible. Uh, For Motivation Monday today, it's our new segment that we introduced last week. Uh, Our Motivation Monday segment this week is going to be, uh, the, the theme is, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Okay, so I'll say that one more time. A goal without a plan is just a wish. Now, anyone who's listened to any of the stuff that I've done and who's read any of the stuff that I've written over the past several years, you'll know that I'm big into setting goals for yourselves and working toward getting those goals. And I'm going to say something that might sound a little bit like I'm, I'm counter or I'm, I'm contradicting that. And and I'm not, what I'm going to say is the goals are less important than the process you put in place to get there. Okay, so the goals are not as important as the processes that you put in place to get to the goal. The goal is super important, but unless you have a plan and unless you work on an actual way to achieve that goal, that goal is just going to sit there as a wish. It's just a hope that's sitting out in the future that you're never, ever going to actually get to. Okay, so so the whole point of this particular segment of Motivation Monday is whatever goals you have set for yourself. They're great. They've got to matter to you. Now, you need to develop a way that you're going to actually get them. You're not, you can't achieve them. Think about it this way. Let's say your goal is, uh, you're in a, let's say you're in an open water swim environment. And you're, the, the point of this open water swim environment is to swim out to a buoy that's in the, mi- in the middle of this large lake. And you've, got to ru- you've got to swim out, touch the buoy, and then swim back to the, uh, to the shore. When you don't have a plan in place, when you don't have a process in place, you're wearing a blindfold to get to the buoy. So there's no guarantee that you're even going to know where to even start or you're going to be off track from the get-go, right? So you want to keep that that goal in your sight as you work toward it, right? So the plan is going to be, okay, here's how I swim, and this is the this is how I'm keeping myself on uh, in navigation to get there, and this is what happens when I get to this point, and this is what happens when I get to this point, and that kind of thing. That's that's the process and the plan that we're talking about. All right, so that's that's my take on um, on a goal without a plan is just a wish. So now it's Carrie's turn. You also actually have to do the swimming. Right. That's it. Okay, good. Uh, so the the point is you got to work, right? I mean, the, the, it's not the goal. In other words, the buoy is not coming to you. Like you can't sit there on the shore and expect the buoy to come to you, right? You've got right. to go out and do the work itself. Um, right. So that's really the, the point. Goals are awesome. 
plans are even better because you're not going to reach the goal without a plan, but you actually have to instigate the plan. Yeah. You got to take action, right? You got to take... have to act. Right. And, and my phrase, what I like to use is take massive action, right? No matter what your goal is, take massive action to get yourself there. Um, because if you've got a well-formulated goal, it's going to have a time frame on it. Nothing better than reaching your goal before you set your deadline uh, so that you can start working toward more stuff, better stuff sooner. All right. So, so that's your motivation for, the, for this week is whatever your goals are, make sure you've got a plan in place and make sure you're ready to take action to get there. And don't wait. Start today. Start today by working on it. All right. The other, good, the other good thing about a plan is that it typically involves breaking it into smaller steps, which makes reaching the goal seem a lot more attainable. It's like, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right. And also the plan gives you steps so it doesn't seem like this, you know, Everest of a thing. You just go, OK, so this is the plan. And the first little bit, oh, I can do that. And then you do that. And then the next little bit, oh, I can do that. Rather than looking at this, what could potentially be an enormous goal and going, wow, and, and just being paralyzed. Right. Plans are good. Make a plan, lovely people. Yeah, and what happens when you do that is you break this, you break this plan down into, 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 into smaller achievable steps and you, get, you basically reinforce uh, the positivity because you have a series of small wins and you start to feel better about yourself because you've accomplished these things as you work yourself toward there. It's not like you're standing there staring at this huge tall mountain. You've, you've basically said, okay, I need to get you know, 10 feet up. Now I need to get 15 feet up. Now I need to get 20 feet up. You know, that's, that's the, the plan. That's the process. That's breaking it down to these smaller steps. And eventually you'll be able to, to summit that mountain. That's how it works. So, uh, because you are, after all, awesome. Because you're awesome. That's you right. Just, you just might not know it, but you are. Right. This will help you know it. Yes. The people at the top of the mountain will recognize your awesomeness once you get there. So you need to recognize it before you get there. So there you go. Um, okay. So um, what is it that we are talking about today since we've done with since we finished our motivation Monday, what are we talking about in terms of substance? Cows. Cow. Cows. Okay. Um, okay. Hold on. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Are we are we pro or anti cow? We love cows. Okay, we love. Love. Cows. Cows. All right. Well, I have to say, I have to confess, I do not love cows, and this is why. I live around cows, and cows are mean. And they break stuff, and they don't even care. And when you talk, when you confront them about it, they don't even act like they know what you're talking about. They will, they will, they will break stuff, and then pretend like it's your fault, like they had nothing to do with it. It's it's ridiculous. Wait, that reminds me of someone. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> who? who, who? You okay, move, moving on. Wait, again. you better not be talking about me, woman. You better not be talking about me. I'm gonna say that right now. <laughs> Let me be okay. clear. Hey, I have a great cow joke. Oh, boy. Okay, this is good. Okay, lay it on me. Can I do my cow joke? Please do. So there's two cows standing in a field having a conversation. The first cow says, I'm really worried about this mad cow disease. And the other one says, I'm not. I'm a helicopter. <laughs> uh that's good that's good i boom boom <laughs> i like that the joke is continuing like you gave the punchline now you're adding like now it's even more of what the cow said like i'm jamie far like it just it doesn't matter like the the cow joke is going to go on forever now uh all right that's good that's a good cow joke Okay. I don't know that I've ever uttered those were uttered those words before. That's a good cow joke, but I just did. So it's out Do you there. Feel better? I I don't know. I don't think so. I, I keep pushing you into uncharted territory. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's discomforting. Disquieting, as it were. All right. So what specifically about cows are we talking about today? So I wanted to talk about cows, and I think we've, we, we already agreed that this was going to be cows part one. 
Um, but we don't actually know at this point how many parts there are going to be. Right. And there, it's possible that there could be a half of one left or we could have 19 more. It just depends. <laughs> right. Regardless, this is Cow's part one. All right. Cow's part one came about because I'm in the midst of writing you all a crock pot cook book because everybody has been asking me to write a crock pot cook book. So I am, I'm here to serve. And I was at the butchers buying beef to make exciting deliciousness for said cookbook. And I discovered that there was, maybe there still is, a brisket shortage, a brisket crisis. I don't, I do, okay, nothing about that makes me happy. There's not, right? I don't like the sound of it. In Seattle, there's a brisket shortage. Right? I, I, I could not. I, uh, hello, butcher. Hello, over here. I don't see any brisket. Where's the brisket? Can you fish me out some brisket? Uh, we have no brisket. The, bis- the brisket did not come in. It didn't arrive. We have none. I'm like, wait, what? You have no brisket? I don't How like this. How can you have no brisket? I don't like this at all. This, Next this right door, here, that is, thing. That is a like, sign huh? of the apocalypse. That is a sign of the apocalypse. I don't Third like store, it. No brisket. I don't like it. Fourth store. I'm like, dude brisket he's like no brisket i'm like there is a brisket crisis what is happening however in the fourth store he said i don't have brisket but i've got this awesome tri-tip okay joints big i mean like tri-tip the side now now i love tri-tip steak it's my favorite cut of steak one of the reasons for that is it is one or it's probably the second most ketogenic cut of beef there is because of the fat to protein ratio try to be is awesome and so i'm a big fan so i'm like oh try tip i love try tip talk to me about how try tip is the same as brisket and so we i had this conversation with him and and if you're wondering how it is that i don't just know all of this stuff one of the reasons why i don't just know all this stuff is because in england we call all the beef parts different names so I'd never heard a tri-tip until I came to America because we don't have tri-tip. Well, we do have tri-tip, but we call it something completely different. And so I'm my nomenclature for cows is not American. Hold on. You just said, hold on. You just said nomenclature. Yes. In America, we pronounce that nomenclature. So if anyone's not familiar with... With the aluminium's uh, pronunciations, it's nomenclature for the U.S. people. All right, go on. That. So I said to him, tell me about tri-tip versus brisket. And so we had this lovely conversation, and he said, what are you doing with it? And I said, I'm tossing it in a slow cooker. And he said, Oh, tri-tip will be great and tri-tip will, in fact, be better. And I'm like, okay, tell me about that because everybody uses brisket. So if tri-tip's better and anyway, so that's how the whole cow episode came about because I don't know how many of you know that if a recipe calls for brisket and either there is none or because somewhere else is having a brisket crisis or the tri-tip is cheaper, you can use tri-tip instead of brisket and get actually a better result. So that was what started this. Hold on one second. You just, you, them fighting words and you need to reiterate them uh, so that I can, I can take a moment to, to bask in those again, better than brisket. Sorry. Now what now? Right. No, not right. Right. Because umbridge. Tri-tip umbridge. Is, tri, tri, tri-tip is fatter than brisket. And and so, but I, I, I was like, okay, are you sure? Because this is for, for a pulled beef 
crock pot recipe. And I said, so does it pull? I mean, does it shred like brisket? And he said, it shreds absolutely like brisket. And if you look at it, you won't be able to tell the difference, but it's more tender and it's fatter. So you'll actually like it more. And hey, guess what? If I'd have had brisket, it would have been $8.99 a pound. And um, but instead, I've got tri-tip and it's five ninety nine a pound. And I was like, whoa, whoa, this is like a huge score day. One, I've just learned that you can substitute brisket and tri-tip. And two, this is costing me way less money than it would have done if he'd have had brisket. So, yay, that there's a bis- brisket crisis. And so it was all good. But I don't I, I wanted to share that little tidbit that tri-tip and brisket are interchangeable so if you've got a recipe for brisket and tri-tip happens to be cheaper get the tri-tip and if you don't you know but if 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 the tri-tip's more expensive get the brisket if they have it so that was what of course we could talk about cows until the cows come home (laughs) i don't want them home i don't want them home they break stuff did i mention that already so but but so that was the starting point for why i wanted to talk about cows okay can i can i just add a few things to what you just said you can add whatever you like because i have a suspicion that you being american know a lot more about cows than i do because in 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 england our cows produce the most amazing dairy compared to american dairy is kind of eh. british dairy is amazing right however your cows produce amazing meat for eating steaks right. and whatnot. Right. British cows, eh, not so much. So I don't know what that deal is, but I know it's true. So <laughs> I I never really grew up with a kind I, – I mean, beef is like the lesser thing that we eat in England um, because it's meh. I'm, Whereas here, you eat so much beef. You're a very beef-centric nation because the, the cows you grow are just fantastic when you chop them up and cook them. No, here's the thing. Here's the th- this Sorry, is wh- vegetarians, for that visual. Here's why we eat so much cow in this country. It's because I hate cows. That's why. Cows <laughs> cows suck. So we're trying to we're trying to get rid of them systematically. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so please, Mr. Mr. Williamson, please add whatever you would like to add about cows. All right. And, so and we'll make as many epi- cow episodes as we need to till we get through it all. The the terminology uh, so you talked about different cuts of meat and so, okay. Internationally, there is not a, there's not a single nomenclature or a sing. Now you've got me hung up on this word. There's not a single, um, uh, nomenclature, se- nomenclature of the aluminum that it requires for whatever. Anyway. So, um, in other words, in America, what we know as Chuck would be something along the lines of. Uh, it, it's it it runs what would be known as the neck, or the chuck and blade, or even possibly part into the thick rib. Those are the areas that that are covered by uh, the chuck. Brisket is a different is a different area in in England than it is in the United States. So so terminology you you gotta since we can't accomplish all of it like. You know, American cuts are different than Argentinian cuts, and they're different than Dutch, and they're different than the Portuguese and Turkish and 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 British. So so different cuts. So uh, if we can, we're not going to be able to cover them all. So we're we're basically just going to be sticking with the American names, um, mostly because I'm I'm very uh, jingoist. That's let me just I'll just say it that way. Um, now, what what. Carrie's talking about with the tri-tip is also known as bottom sirloin in some places. So when you go in and you ask for tri-tip, if they stare at you like you've got, you know, a third eye growing out of a stalk coming off the back of your head, um, make sure, first of all, you don't have that because that would probably require medical intervention. I'm just, that's just, a, a, you know, a suggestion on my part. But if you go and you ask for tri-tip and they don't know what you're talking about, it's also called bottom sirloin. Now, if you're in Jolly Ol, there's no such thing. Um, you've got rump, you've got, um, flank and you've got th- sort of the thick flank area that, that kind of covers some of that, but rump is probably going to be the closest thing. The bottom part of the rump cut, um, is going to be the closest thing, um, to that. Um, so, so the tri-tip stuff, it's, uh, bottom sirloin and there's a reason, okay, 
There's a reason why certain cuts of meats are fattier than others. And there's a reason why certain cuts of meat are, are leaner than others. And the reason is because it's what the, the particular area of the animal is used for. Very muscular uh, parts of the body are going to be a lot, a lot leaner than otherwise, unless they're specifically genetically um, uh, uh, constructed for that. So when we're talking about a bottom sirloin area, that's not where a lot of musculature is for cows. That's, um, that's an area where the, the, the rear legs meet the, the torso area, the rib area, and that's kind of in between. So there's, there's not a lot of muscle there, so that's why it's a very fatty cut of meat. So that's why it's good for what Carrie's talking about. So I just wanted to make sure we understood so that, um, you know, when we're talking about tri-tip, it's also known as bottom sirloin in the United States. Um, there's no direct corollary that I know of for England, um, but it's probably going to be the, the, you know, the bottom cut of the, of the rump cut. Um, so that's, that, I wanted to get that in there just to be, just to, just to clarify things, rump steak or round steak or whatever in, in England. So. That, did, that, did that make sense? It it does. It's all very complicated. Cows are ve- clearly very complex animals, and we have only complicated it further by calling all the bits different names. Right. Yeah, and that you know, and that's just that's just the way it goes. You know, there's that's just the way it goes. So, again, and I think Brian's right. We should. Not because this is America, because there's more Americans. We'll go with the majority and we'll use the American names. But from my point of view, it's because Americans are, are way better at growing beef cows than than Brits are. Um, but I thought it also might be helpful to just give you a rundown of what the fattest cuts of beef are, um, which will help you to... Fat, choose fattier cuts rather than because sometimes when you're in the store they all kind of look the same and i mean i stand in the store and there's like 58 different cuts of beef and i'm like yay beef and and so it do they ask it, you to leave when you do that or are they like um, madam we would we've asked you not to do this several times please stop cheering on the beef you're frightening actually, the other customers I, my, my local grocery store they um they know me now and um they're used to my odd behavior i actually had um uh, Korean TV came to my house one day, not randomly, we arranged it beforehand, and they wanted to go to the grocery store with me. So we actually went to my local grocery store and we filmed me choosing eggs and looking at yogurt cartons and looking at beef and things. So my local grocery store is, is used to me. So I can kind of get away with a lot. Um. See, yeah, I <laughs> that I don't know about Korean sensibilities, not exactly, but I would have to say that if that's what they find compelling, like we're going to watch Carrie choose eggs. I, who am I to argue? Hmm. I'm like whatever you lovely people want, and and so then we came home and they wanted to film me making um, keto cupcakes. Oh. No keto, well, word. Did I can't remember if that recipe involved an egg. Anyway, so then they came home and they filmed me making some keto soup, and then they filmed me making some keto cupcake, and and they had almost no English, and I have minus in the Korean department. But we had a lot of fun, and we laughed a lot, and and it was good. But the the supermarket have never quite recovered from from the day I filmed there. So they they just let me in and go do whatever you need to do, and then leave. Well, they're just happy that you don't have a film crew with them with you now. Like it, the like they had to scramble to clean up the aisles while you were going there the first time. Now, now they're just happy you don't have that coming in. Exactly. I think so I think everyone good. wants to know. I think it, I think it's a safe bet that everyone wants to know what kind of eggs did you choose? And did they, and did now. and did the did the Koreans approve of your choice of eggs? Um. Yes, the Koreans approved of everything I did. They 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 smiled. Are you and backing nodded. up? Are you backing up? What's going on? <laughs> that is my uh, one of my crockpots telling me that the one of the recipes I'm making for the book, the cookbook is um is ready. Ah, okay, all right. 
So anyway, you know, the Koreans smiled and nodded a lot and it was very lovely. We spent about six hours together and then, and then they packed up their camera gears and nodded and smiled some more and, and, and off they went. All right. Anyway, so cows. So the number one, if you want, if you want the most ketogenic in terms of uh, fat to protein ratio, here's the top few. The number one cut is boneless short ribs or bone in short ribs, wherever it's the meat. That's bone. Important. Okay. So boneless or bone in short, short ribs are the fattiest cut. Short, short ribs are, and that's of course why they taste so darn delicious <laughs> is they are 84% fat and 16% protein. 84% Yum. fat. Okay. So, um, the, Shorts. and yeah. they are part of the chuck, which is the kind of the chest shoulder shoulder. Yeah. Piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So the short ribs. Okay. So the chuck. Okay. If you can visualize this, imagine a cow, not a spherical cow, a regular cow, and you're looking at it sideways. So right behind the head is going to be the chuck right below the chuck is the brisket right behind the chuck is the rib. So the short ribs are that intermediate area right there where the ribs and the chuck kind of meet. That, right. That, that uh, short rib area. The other fantastic, if that wasn't enough fantasticness about short ribs, the other fantasticness is, is that they're cheap. Yes. Okay. Here's another. Okay. So you, you get, I mean, it's double whammy, right? If, if you're, you know, they're the greatest fat and they're cheap and they're easy to cook. So short ribs for the win. Right. So here's the other thing. Um, you're go Until there's a sea change in the way food is perceived, uh, you know, what healthy food is, um, we will be reaping the benefit of the fact that the fattier cuts are always going to be cheaper because mm -hmm. the, the market is dictated by where the money goes and the money goes toward the leaner cuts of meat. So we who are buying all the fatty cuts of meat – we get to reap the rewards of that because we're buying the cheaper stuff. And, and actually, top tip, um, a, a butcher, if you have a friendly butcher or you don't have a butcher but you, you might want to go make friends with your local butcher, um, is that if you ask for – so you can go in and say, I want this steak but leave all the fat on. Because normally they trim everything. Right, if you right. go in and ask for it untrimmed, my local butcher will give me $2 a pound off of anything right. that is untrimmed. Right. And so, and they will grind you, a good butcher, a friendly butcher will grind you what we call mince, so ground beef. If you are, you know, you can get, it's hard to get 70-30. But if you go to your butcher and say, I want 70, 30, which of course, no, everyone thinks you're mad, but right. who cares? Right. If you, if you ask them to make 70, 30, they'll make you 70, 30 and it'll be two pounds a pound, sorry, two pounds, two dollars <laughs> a pound cheaper than if you're buying the 85, 15, which is on the shelf. So go in, find a friendly butcher, ask for it untrimmed. Ask them to make you 70, 30 ground beef. They will sell it to you significantly cheaper than if you buy the trimmed or the pre-ground mince uh, right. beef. So here's the thing. Because, because the majority of the consumers don't appreciate fat the way that we do, it's not looked upon as something that's beneficial or something that people want. Okay, I live in a, a small town in Texas, just south of Austin, and it is it is officially known as the barbecue capital of Texas. You made that up. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. It is officially titled the barbecue capital of Texas. It has some of it has world world class, world renowned barbecue joints in it. Now, when we go to one of these places for lunch, for whatever reason, um, they know us by now, and they know that we're going to be asking for the fattiest cuts of meat that we can find, that they'll give it to us. And they will even cut off just hunks of fat because they know they don't have to throw it away now. They'll give it to us, and we'll, eat, we, you know, we'll have that on our plate as well. 
So when you are keto and you're asking for fat, the people who are producing the food will more than will be more than happy to give it to you because it means it's less for them to have to deal with. So uh, it's just a a point of consideration when you're buying this stuff. Right. Um, but also budget. I mean, two dollars a pound right. is a lot. Right. So make friends with the butcher. Go ask, but you don't have to buy what's pre-done, pre-packed. Butchers are lovely. If you talk to them, they'll, right. they're actually excited because normally they're stuck out in the back there and nobody talks to them. I don't have any interaction. If you actually go talk to one, they'll do all sorts of things for you. They might think you're a complete weirdo, but, you know, if you do it in a cute, quirky way, they'll be all over it. I do neither cute nor quirky. I just have to make sure that everyone understands that. I do talk to the butcher of the particular grocery store that we frequent, um, but mostly it's just to tell them exactly what I want. And I'll tell you right now, when you tell a butcher exactly what you want, they're happy. Right? Yeah, they're, they're, they absolutely are. They, they love, you know, they love something different, just like most people. It's just like, ooh, something different. Right. Oh, yay, I get to do something. I get to think. They love that. Right. Plus, as I said, for the millionth time, budget. Right, because they're humans <laughs> too. Your butcher is a human being too. So my butcher was so excited that somebody asked him to to talk about brisket and tri tip. So excited. Anyway, <laughs> list. So only uh, short ribs. Short ribs number, number one. one. Number one. Number two is tri tip. Tri tip. Tri tip roast. Tri tip steaks. Seventy seven percent fat. Seventy seven percent. Okay, tri tip, also known as as uh, bottom sirloin. Uh, so, okay. That's the second one. What's the third one? The third one, looking at my list here, the third one coming in at 75% is the back ribs. Back ribs. Okay. So we talked about the short ribs, which are up near the chuck. Now we're talking about back ribs, which are near the short loin. Okay. So that rib area on both sides. Okay. So the flank steak is also lower, a little bit lower than that. Um, so anyway, there you go. What's next? The And then in joint fourth, we have a three-way tie between the rib roast, the rib steak, and the ribeye steak. Uh, we're catching a theme here. Like It's all about the rib area. For all the, about the ribs. Right. So there's a reason why ribs are so popular. It's not because and, – and ribs are a lot of work if you if – you, they can be messy and they can be a lot of hassle and but the reason that they're so delicious is because they have a whole lot of um of collagen uh, available so that when they're cooked correctly uh it really just kind of melts in your mouth the whole thing works it's a lot of fa- it's a lot of fat it's a lot of uh of uh um very soft kinds of uh pleasurable you know uh in terms of texture when you eat it that that sort of stuff. So, um, it, it's just that there's a reason why it's so popular. It's because it, it really works well when you cook it correctly. And, um, the fact that it's super fat is even better. So those are the top six. So if you're at a steakhouse, hit the ribeye. Um, that'll be your best steak. Yeah. Then conversely, look at the ones you want to avoid or if you if you love this particular cut just know that you will do better if you go out of your way to add extra fat to these cuts so if it's your favorite cut i'm not saying it's bad don't eat it i'm saying eat it but just know that you might want to add a bit more fat to that so we have the sirloin steak Mm -hmm. round tip yeah, the sirloins are all around, see, this is how low fat they are, 28%, 35%, yeah. 37%. So they are just way down there. The the round tip sirloin and the sirloin steak are all super low. So add some more fat if those are your favorite cuts. Yeah, so that's a good, that's a good point too, right? Like if you... If you happen to enjoy uh, filet mignon, which is not a very fatty cut of meat, if you happen to enjoy sirloin, which is not a very fatty cut of meat, um, you can still get them. Just add some fat to it, you know. Get some, get some guacamole. Uh, add some real butter to it. Whatever you can add the fat as well. Um, so 
Uh, it, it, you're not you're, you're not out of luck if that's your particular favorite. Uh, I... No, and it's easy to add fat to anything, really. So, right. yeah, if those are your favorite, just add fat to those. And to those this, okay, cuts hold on. Cool cuts, we what's need to, called the round. I want to. I want to. I want to make sure we're, we're very clear about what we're saying here. You add fat to the same meal. Okay, that's right. So, what I hear from people frequently, far too frequently, quite frankly, is <clears throat> I ate a particular meal, didn't have enough fat, and then I realized a couple hours hours later, so I ate a bunch of fat so that I could even it out. Like that's not how it works, right? So your body <laughs> digests food when you eat the food. Like it starts the digestive process when you eat it. So it's not like you're, oh, I realized a couple hours later I can just take a bunch of fat and it'll negate any of the non-fat food that I ate. That's not how it works, right? So eat it in the same meal, you know, and and, and in theme of what we've been talking about previously though, even still, you know, even if you do eat a, th- uh, a lean cut of meat and you don't add a lot of fat to it, that's fine. You know, just just get back, you know, to eating higher fat stuff when you get back to eating. Right. So when your next meal, make up for it by getting back to a a, a well formulated keto uh, meal. You don't have to worry just, about it too much. Just to to finish up where we started, which was the brisket versus tri tip. Tri tip is is number two at seventy seven percent. Brisket comes in at fifty four percent. So that's another reason why if you're doing a pulled beef or something where you would traditionally use brisket, that's another reason why you might want to consider tri-tip. It's also another reason why slow-cooked tri-tip actually gives you a tender, richer pulled beef result than brisket because it's got a lot of X, another 23% more fat. So so to to kind of piggyback onto that, some of the things that you can do, because all right, so tri-tip is essentially m- marbled, and when someone talks about being marbled, uh, meat being marbled, it's fat that is all throughout. Uh, it, it's it's subcutaneous fat that's it's inside the tissues. And it's going to be all throughout the cuts. Brisket is not necessarily the case. What happens with brisket is there's a layer of fat on one side, and the other side is essentially just lean meat, right? So. As, as Carrie just explained, about 50% of it is going to be fat um, in terms of just obvious fat, not, not, the, not the actual intramuscular uh, fat that you've got there. So um, when you go to a barbecue joint or if you're talking to a butcher and you want to order a particular, you know, if you want to, you can get a fattier version of brisket if you order the, the moist or the extra moist cut they'll give you all of the fat that goes along with it to, to increase that. Um, or they'll make sure they don't trim off the fat, uh, for, of the brisket. So it doesn't have as much, uh, going for it in terms of fat content as compared to tri-tip, but you can still get fattier than average brisket by asking for the moist stuff. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. What next? That's it. That's cows part one. Done. Cows part one. And we didn't even get into the reason why minced meat and ground beef are the same thing. Right. I know. There's so much to talk about. Cows, Cows part two coming soon. <laughs> coming we just don't know how soon. Right. Coming soon. And soon is relative because the universe is slowly entering a state of entropy and dying. So yes. there you go. Uh, anyway, we hope that helped you with at least some parts of the cow. Um, yeah. All right. Hey, go cows. Okay, there you go. Go cows, please. Just go away Uh, (laughs) because I don't like cows. All right. Uh, Carrie Brown, as always, thank you very much. You're most uh, welcome, sir, and lovely listeners. Right. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. That's right. That's another episode of the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Carrie, bring in the uh, the cow knowledge. If you're curious, there'll be more of these because uh, learning about the foods that you're eating is really, really important. All right, so you're looking for the fattier cuts because they're cheaper and they're better for you. All right. If you want to know more about what we're doing, go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com. You can uh, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get the recipes that we're putting on the website, that Carrie's putting on the website, the awesome recipes, the stuff that people are like, wow, I didn't know keto could be like this. 
you're going to get that. You're going to have that available to you. So sign up for the newsletter. Um, if you want to join the Facebook group, it's Keto Evangelist Kitchen. That's facebook.com slash group slash Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Because because that's where the kitchen is. Is The kitchen's not on Facebook. That's ridiculous. Okay. What was I saying? We're also on Twitter and Instagram. You can find Keto Van Kitchen on Twitter and Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. Yeah, I know. I know. It's weird. It's hard to figure that out. But if you have a Motivation Monday that you want us to talk about, hit us up on Twitter. Give us a tweet. You can find us at Keto Van Kitchen. And hashtag it with Motivation Monday so that we know what you're going for. All right. This has been fun. And until next time, y'all keep being awesome. Powered by Ketones.